Let's say that you've just had a hearty lunch of carbohydrates and your body is trying to break down these carbohydrates for energy. The body does this in a process called aerobic respiration. The first step is glycolysis, or the breakdown of glucose. The purpose of glycolysis is to break down the glucose molecule into two, three carbon molecules of pyruvate. It involves two phases, the energy consuming phase and the energy producing phase. It's kind of like how you need to invest money to make more money. In the energy investment phase, one ATP is used to convert glucose into glucose 6-phosphate, which rearranges into fructose 6-phosphate. The second ATP is used to create fructose 1,6-biphosphate, which is split up to form two glyceraldehyde 3-phosphates, accompanied by the production of 4 ATP and 2 NADH. After a few more rearrangements, each glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate will eventually become pyruvate. Two pyruvate molecules then undergo pyruvate decarboxylation by pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, or PDC. PDC is able to transform pyruvate into acetyl-CoA, which is used in the citric acid cycle to produce NADH and FADH, which are reducing equivalents that generate ATP down the road. Pyruvate dehydrogenase catalyzes the oxidative decarboxylation of pyruvate to acetyl-CoA. This involves a loss of CO2 molecule and the generation of NADH per pyruvate. This step is not too efficient because for every glucose molecule, two carbons are lost. This is undesirable, especially for applications in biorefining and carbon efficiency of cell growth. Hmm, how can we improve this pathway? Three clever scientists named Mr. Bogorod, Dr. Lin, and Dr. Liao developed their own glycolytic pathway. Because their pathway was non-oxidative, they called it non-oxidative glycolysis, or NOG. I know, these scientists were so creative, right? So, in their pathway, three glucose molecules get converted into three fructose 6-phosphate molecules, just like in regular glycolysis. This is where things get interesting. These three F6P molecules get broken down into three acetyl phosphates, or ACP, molecules, and then three erythrose 4-phosphate, E4P molecules by the enzyme phosphoketolase. This step is super important because it's irreversible and provides the main driving force for this reaction to occur. At the end, you end up with a net reaction that produces three ACP molecules for every F6P molecule. These ACP molecules then get converted into three acetyl CoAs, which enter the TCA cycle. The three E4P molecules then undergo carbon rearrangement to make two F6P molecules. These F6P molecules then enter the carbon rearrangement cycle, and then the cycle begins again. Voila, there you have it. This is how NOG converts a glucose molecule into three acetyl-CoA molecules without the loss of a carbon source as carbon dioxide. These clever scientists conducted many studies to make sure their pathway was working correctly. So first, they put in all their relevant enzymes, except for one, and measured the concentration of these ACP molecules. The enzyme missing is called tau, which is essential for the carbon rearrangement step of E4P to F6P. Without it, the pathway doesn't sustain itself. They found much higher levels of ACP when tau is added, as opposed to when they are not. This in vitro experiment confirms that the enzymes produce ACP and that carbon rearrangement is needed to sustain the cycle. The NOG pathway converts any carbohydrate into ACP two carbon molecules without the loss of carbon as CO2. Therefore, to test the stoichiometry of this reaction, they performed an experiment where they converted a known amount of F6P into ACP and they found that on average one F6P molecule produced 2.7 ACP molecules, which is awfully close to 3. They also found that one R5P molecule with five carbons, another intermediate of the carbon rearrangement step, produced on average 2.2 ACP molecules, which is really close to five divided by two, which is 2.5. And finally, they found that one G3P molecule with three carbons produced around 1.2 ACP molecules, which is close to the theoretical yield of 1.5. They also performed a control where they removed one of the enzymes rendering the pathway inactive, and found significantly decreased ACP production as expected. Overall, these experiments confirmed that their pathway was working in a stoichiometrically predictable way, 
and that the enzymes they used were relevant and necessary to produce the products they wanted. So overall, Dr. Bogorod, Dr. Lin, and Dr. Liao invented a pathway that produced three acetyl-CoA molecules for every glucose instead of the two typically produced in aerobic respiration. Why are we so excited? Well, in biorefineries today, glucose is converted into acetyl-CoA through glycolysis because acetyl-CoA is a precursor to biofuels like ethanol and butanol. By increasing the efficiency of glycolysis, NOG has profound implications on improving sustainability of fossil fuels and climate change. Also, this pathway can take in many different kinds of sugar molecules and convert them completely into acetyl-CoA. Now that's bang for your buck.